I've spent the last week in the Lincoln Navigator Black Label, which means it's the flagship for the Ford Luxury Arm Lincoln. The biggest, the best, and the most expensive. There's a lot to love, but nothing is perfect, so here are the best things and the worst things about the Lincoln Navigator Black Label. Welcome to Downshift Studios, my name is Matt. For the cars that we're reviewing behind the wheel, check out our sister channel, Downshift Reviews. We'll have that linked in the description below. We're gonna get the bad stuff out of the way right away. First of all is price. This is a really nice luxury SUV, but the as-tested price is about $107,000. And that's a lot of money for something still riding on a truck platform. I know things like the Escalade also do, and they're more money and that sort of thing, but when you really compare it over six figures, I'm expecting a little bit more refined luxury ride. Which leads me to number two, the ride itself. The ride is actually pretty solid, but the reason I have it on the negative list is for two main reasons. Yes, the main competitors are the Wagoneer and the Escalade, which, just like the Navigator, ride on truck platforms. However, now these luxury American SUVs are crossing six figures, and while the ride is pretty good, it's not touching the unibody composition you'll get overseas from BMW, Audi, and Mercedes. And let's not pretend that you're actually off-roading your three-row luxury SUV. Maybe you're towing with it at the very most. But the second reason that I have it on the negative list is that this Navigator doesn't use air suspension like its American rivals, so it doesn't have that level of sophistication and customizability or the ability to change ride heights in the same way that, and to the same degree, I guess I should say, as the Escalade and the Wagoneer. And then number three is the key. This is just a nitpick, but the key is just a Ford key. So sure, they put this leather tab on it and a decorative leather tassel on the keychain, but it's the same key that you get on an Escape. But the good news is you can use your phone as a key if you really want. Number four, no rear seat entertainment system. There's a lot about the rear seating that's on the good list, but something missing from my tester is the screens for the second row, something that we had on the Grand Wagoneer and the Escalade V earlier last year. But now let's talk about the things that impressed me about the Navigator. Number one, and this is a bit nuanced, but the pretension. There's an impressive level of snobbery, and I say that in the most endearing terms with this Navigator. The example is the exterior color is called Chrome Caviar Dark Gray. Not dark gray, Chrome Caviar Dark Gray. And then there's interior, which isn't black. That would be derivative. The interiors are organized into themes, such as chalet, yacht club, central park, or the theme that we have, which is called Invitation. It's very Gatsby, it's very, very cool. Number two is the driving experience. I know I said the lack of air suspension was on the bad list and then the ride was on the bad list, but the ride is still fairly decent. It's cushy and floaty and it's very old luxury, which I personally would be looking for in something like this. The twin turbo V6 makes almost 450 horsepower and over 500 pound-feet of torque, so it's got plenty of power, it's relatively quick, all black labels come standard with four-wheel drive, so you've got confidence and it's smooth and you can get massaged while you drive around wherever you're gonna go. Number three is the seats themselves. Your front seats do have the 30-way, I'm gonna say that again, 30 different ways of adjustment. They also have heating, they're also cooled, and they have a myriad of massage functions. It's just pretty impressive. Number four is the technology. The head unit has been updated and you have the latest Ford Sync system, which means you got wireless CarPlay, Android Auto, and you have over-the-air updates, which is more than we can say for the Kia EV6 that's sitting in our parking or in my driveway right now. The 360 camera is pretty decent. The graphics are pretty good and the Active Glide driver assist system is it's kind of just aggressively average. It's pretty good. And number five is the details. All of the interior themes get some unique details, but here in the invitation theme, you have these really cool details within the wood. They're kind of etched in. This is the stuff that makes a luxury car to me. This is the stuff that sets it apart from everything else. That extra level of detail, that extra paying attention to that small little thing that you're not gonna notice right away, but makes you really feel special when you're in it. Number six is the second row. Super simple, the second row seats don't get screens, but they get heating, cooling, and massage. Massage in the second row. I mean, this is like S-class executive rear seating package type stuff. And then number seven, even going further, the third row. The third row is actually a pretty decent size. I can fit reasonably well, and I have power recline back there. I don't have a sunroof back there like you might get in a BMW X7, but the space is pretty good, the seat comfort is good, I'm not, you know, eating my knees with a floor that's just way up there, so impressed by the third row. 
And then number eight, the trunk. The trunk has auto up down for all the seats that you can deploy. It's got extra storage under the floor and you can get the extended wheelbase, the L, which is over a foot longer. And that pretty much all goes to trunk space. So it really can be pretty practical. And then number nine and finally, are the animations. It's kind of surface level, but I do really like the way the lights kind of fade in to welcome you as you approach the car. This isn't unique to Ford, this isn't even something that's generally very new, but it's very simple, it doesn't have to be overdone, and it's kind of that restrained sense that I think makes it feel a little bit more elegant and a little bit more distinguished than maybe the crazy dance that your Audi would do when you approach that. Well, that's it. There you have it. Those are the best and worst things that I experienced during my week with the Lincoln Navigator Black Label. As a $107,000 luxury three row SUV, it's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. The things that I'm thinking about are maybe some of the small plastics that could be brought up scale or, you know, the truck based body on frame nature of, of the vehicle lending to a less sophisticated ride than it could be. All of these things go in tandem with it being the American three row. You've got your Escalades, you've got your Navigator, then you've got your Grand Wagoneers. So this is, this is par for the course, but it does feel like the nature of the chassis might be holding it back in terms of luxury, but still a very impressive, fun thing to drive around if you've got the money. It was very special. So thanks again to Lincoln for letting us have a go and we'll see you in the next one.